Welcome back to part two of the financial modeling course, where we will build a simple dashboard summary from the part one model that we created. In the last video, we created the discounted cash flow. What we want to do is create a dashboard that shows the key figures in a summary and a sensitivity table. So first, let's create a new tab. Change the margin on the left and the top. You can highlight the column with control space bar on your keyboard, alt OCW 0.5. And you can highlight the top row by pressing down on shift and space bar and on your keyboard, alt ORE and put five, enter. Grab the same format of the name at the top of the tab in the other model. Let's call that Joe's 3D4U since that's the company's name and put DCF summary dashboard. For dashboards, you want to think about what are the key numbers you want to communicate to the audience. In this DCF summary, I want to show just three headline numbers. One for revenue, one for gross profit margin, and another for income margin. Let's start off by putting the number of years from 2022 actuals to 2028. Then I want total revenue, gross profit margin, and net income margin. Under each year, of link it to the DCF model and change the format to show one decimal in millions since this is a dashboard summary so we don't need to show all the numbers in detail. I'm going to change the format here so that it has one decimal place, a dollar sign in the front, and it shows M for millions after. And for this formatting tip, check out part one. I will change the color of these to green since they are linked from another model tab. Do the same for gross profit margin where I will link it to the gross profit margin in the DCF tab and the net income margin from the DCF tab. And let's change the formatting to green and one decimal place. Next, I wanna show a graphical representation of these key numbers so that the audience can easily see what the trend looks like for the forecast. Remember, the point of the summary dashboard is to be able to communicate the key numbers and the narrative without the audience having to search for it or spend too long looking for it. So I will insert a new bar graph, go to chart design and select data, Add series or edit if there's one already. Select the series name, which is total revenue, and the series, which are the revenue numbers. And I'll format the bars by clicking Control-1 on the keyboard. That will show the format shape on the right, and let's change the gap width. I'll insert another line graph. Select data, add series, and for the first series name, choose gross profit margin and its numbers every year after that. Let's add another series, which is for the net income margin. And now we have both on the graph, but the formatting is off and the title is missing. So when you click on the graph, you can select the plus sign on the right to bring up this prompt. I'll click on chart title and change that to margin trends. I also want to get rid of the grid lines for both graphs. I'm going to change the colors. And I will also change the vertical axis because the gross profit margin is too high up. So click on the vertical axis and press Control-1 on your keyboard, and I'll change the axis maximum bounds to 100%. I'll click on both by pressing down on the Control button on your keyboard and clicking on both graphs. Then go to the shape format, and I'll change the width and height numbers to adjust. Next, we want to create a sensitivity table. For a sensitivity table, our objective is to choose two inputs that we can vary and see what their sensitivity is to the output. The inputs we want to vary are the discount rate and the long-term growth rate, which will impact the DCF value. And note that anything can be output and inputs that you can change. For us here, the variable inputs I will see the impact on the DCF value are the discount rate and the long-term growth rate. So let's get rid of all these up here now. After the first step of determining what inputs you want to test the sensitivity for, the second step is to make those inputs be able to change for the sensitivity table. For instance, right now, these inputs are made on the DCF model tab. Instead, we're going to make these inputs be changed on the summary dashboard tab. And in the DCF model, we will link these to come from the summary dashboard, change them to green on the DCF model tab since they are links now. The third step is to design the sensitivity table. The sensitivity table will always look like this. The output that you're testing has to be linked from the model to the very top left of the sensitivity table. Then you put one of the inputs below the output link. I'll put the possible discount rate inputs in the column below the output link. 
In our DCF model, the discount rate is currently 9%, but I want to test what the DCF output will be if the discount rate is 3% or 5% or 7% or 11%, 13%, 15%. You can put any range or intervals based on what you want to test. Along the top row to the right of the DCF value output link, I'll put the long-term growth rate inputs that I want to test. Right now, the long-term growth rate input in the DCF model is 3%. So I want to know what the DCF value would be like if the long-term growth rate is 0% or 1% all the way to 7%. Now let's change the format so that the long-term growth rate inputs are shown across the table as a header. And I don't want to merge the cells here. Choose center across selection. And similarly for the left, I want to show the discount rate inputs across the cells on the left. So I'm going to insert a text box, type discount rate inputs, get rid of the shape outline, rotate it 90 degrees, adjust the sizing of the text box, get rid of the shape fill to no fill, and then put it right beside the discount rate inputs. Next, highlight the table from the top left where the output link is all the way to the bottom right of the table. Press Alt A W T to prompt the data table box, or you can go there by going to the data ribbon, what if analysis, and the data table. For the row input cells, it's asking for the input cell that corresponds to the top row of the sensitivity inputs, which is the long-term growth rates. And for the column input cells, we choose the discount rate and then press OK. Let's change the format to show them in one decimal place and millions. Let's take a closer look at what this table is showing us. If you have a discount rate of 9% and a long-term growth rate of 3%, the DCF value is $7 million. This is what our DCF model shows us now. But if, let's say, the discount rate is 5% and the long-term growth rate remain at 3%, then the DCF value would be a lot higher at 20.3 million. Also notice that there are errors in some of the DCF outputs. These are when the discount rate and the input rates are the same in the model. In the DCF model, the calculation of the terminal value has discount rate minus long-term growth rate in the denominator. So if they're the same, the calculation gets divided by zero, which gives you an error. You also see negative numbers if the long-term growth rate is higher than the discount rate because the denominator will have negative numbers. So you just have to ignore these top right numbers in this sensitivity table. As the final step, we can also add a color scale to highlight the best choices for discount rate and the long-term growth rate that will give us the highest DCF output value. To do that, highlight inside the table all the possible output values, then go to the home ribbon and under conditional formatting, go to color scale. I'm going to choose this one, which highlights in green the highest DCF inputs. So this way in the dashboard summary, the audience can easily assess what could happen to their forecasted DCF value if there are more uncertainties in the future and they have to increase the discount rate from nine to 11%. Or if the economy does really well and let's say the long-term growth rate is even higher than 3%, what their upside scenario of a possible DCF value would be. Now we've put together a simple summary dashboard. The final step is to prettify it. Everyone has different ways to format and style it, but my style is just to put a simple gray background color and the important bits in white background color. And finally, there you have it, a simple summary dashboard built off of the DCF model from the first part of the financial modeling course. I hope this has been helpful and let me know what you want help with next.